enjoyed the time off. And one of the things I did while I was on vacation, I went on a date one evening. I went to dinner and a movie, and I actually went with my wife. So it, <laughs> Darlene and I enjoy movies. We enjoy going to the movies, and we saw several movies over the course of that little ten-day vacation I took. And one of the things that we do, you probably do the same things too, is you look at some of the mu mu uh, the attractions, the things that are coming out soon, and you you say to yourself, you know, I'd like to catch that movie. Or, boy, that was definitely not on my list to see. I want to find out a little bit more about this one or that one. And we do that. We kind of think about what's coming up and what we'd like to see. In March, a movie's coming out that I'm very anxious about. It's called Noah. It stars Russell Crowe as Noah. I like that. It's, uh, it'll be in uh, March. And... Uh, I'm going to fully vet it before I recommend it to everybody, but what I've seen so far and what I've read about it and what I understand about it, I'm anxious to see it because it's a story that's part of our heritage. It's a story we read in Genesis in the sixth chapter. It's when it begins. And it's one that I have drifted back to many times because it's a story while it's very tragic in a lot of ways, it's very hopeful in a lot of ways. I saw the, the trailer, a teaser on that movie, and Emma Watson plays one of Noah's children, I think is the way it goes, and said, is this the end? And he says, no, this is the beginning. I, I just got goosebumps thinking about that. God always has new beginnings for us. So as we start a new year, we're going to remind ourselves here in Seasons this morning that, unfortunately, we probably dealt with a few floods in 2013. And the reality of it is, is we're going to have to deal with some floods in 2014 too. But the good news is, God will see us safely through the storms. Welcome to Seasons. We're glad you're here. Read another piece of scripture for us just a moment here. This is from the 6th chapter of Genesis, and I'm going to begin in verse 13, and I'm just simply going to read a few isolated passages. I would invite all of you to read chapter 6 of Genesis when you have a little time. God said to Noah, make a wooden ark. Make the ark with nesting places. I like that, nesting places. And cover it inside and out with tar. And God goes on to talk to Noah about how to do that ark, what size to make it. And then that last verse of chapter 6 of Genesis, I think is such a wonderful, wonderful scripture. Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. The story of a man who died thousands of years ago. A man who built a really big boat for no other reason than God told him he was going to need that boat, that ark, to survive a flood that was coming. That might seem a strange way to start out a new year for us. But I have a word for you this morning. Conditions look good for a flood. I am not a prophet standing in the tradition of Isaiah or Amos, or Ezekiel. But I have a word from God this morning for all of us. A word that I feel is important. So let's have a word of prayer and get after it. Loving God, we give you thanks for your word that comes to us from ages past. We give thanks for your word that comes to us fresh this morning. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, God, may they be acceptable in your sight. You're our strength, you're our rock, and you are our Redeemer. Amen. amen. And amen. I had one of those mornings that was really wonderful. I was fishing with my brother-in-law. We were off a little spoil island in Ingleside Cove. It was a warm summer morning. We were chasing trout, redfish, and we were having a great time. We had anchored our boat off, uh, off a little spoil island, and we were wave fishing having a good time. And all of a sudden, my brother-in-law, Mike, turns to me and said, Ron, 
Yes, Mike. Where's the boat? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> and I said, it's right. Uh, it's not there. <laughs> we anchored that little boat along the spoil island. And whoever put out the anchor, must have been him, surely could have been me. <laughs> didn't set the anchor well. It pulled loose. And I turned and I looked and I couldn't have spotted it at first. It was a low pro profile boat and finally after a little bit of squinting I could see it drifting away off into the cove. It's a warm summer morning. I'm a strong swimmer. My brother-in-law's on the shore. I want him pressing. So I did what any idiot would do. <laughs> I took off my tennis shoes and I tore off after that boat. I started swimming. And after 5, 10, 15 minutes, I realized I wasn't any closer to that boat than when I started. The tide was carrying it as fast, if not faster, than I could swim. So at least I had the good sense to stop and go back to shore. But when I turned around, you know, it only seemed like I'd swum 5, 10, 15 yards. That little spoil island looked to be almost half a mile away. And so I began to swim back to that little spoil island. Somewhere along the line, I think the phrase must have drifted through my mind, Ron, how long can you tread water? <laughs> There's Noah. Having another ordinary, normal day. And God says, Noah, yes, God. I need you to build me an ark. Right. God? Yes, Noah? What's an ark? <laughs> it's a really big boat. And Noah, you're going to need it to survive the flood that's headed your way. <coughs> Noah built that boat. It took him a long time. A really long time. And I'm sure more than once, Along the way, it must have crossed his mind. I wonder how long I can tread water. The reality is that not a single one of us here this morning can tread water forever. We need something else. We need something to rely on besides our own strength, our own abilities, our own capacity to survive whatever is thrown against us. Sometimes we need an ark. Now real floods, real honest to goodness water driven floods have destructive power. We know that well here in Seguin, Texas. Amen? We've survived several really uh, serious floods. We've seen what they can do. In Psalm 29, which we just read together, it speaks of mighty waters. Mighty waters that can overwhelm engulf us and destroy us. And Psalm 29 is not the only psalm that speaks of floods that sweep over us. There are other writings as well. In Psalm 69, we hear the writer say that, uh, make an appeal to God for help. Why? Because the waters have come up, I love this, come up to my neck and I sink in deep mire. My feet are stuck in the mud. I can't even tread water if I want to. Life can be that way sometimes. Life can be like a flood. A flood of mighty waters. We feel overpowered by everything that rushes against us. We fight emotional and financial floods. We fight relational and vocational floods. And like the psalmist, we find ourselves gasping for breath. We feel like we're up to our neck with the water and our feet are just knee deep in the mud. There will be times when we will not be able to tread water for very long. There will be times in 2014 when we will need an ark. A shelter from the storm. Now we don't need the same kind of ark that Noah did. At least God hasn't given me that word yet. We need a spiritual ark. We need one that can save us from the floods that we face each and every day. We know that those in our midst, right here this morning, suffered tremendous losses in 2013. There are those among us that lost loved ones 
in 2013, 2014 will be no different. There are those that struggled with jobs and finances in 2013. 2014 will see the same. Floods of stress with family conditions and situations struck unexpectedly last year for some. And what happened in 2013 may well happen again in 2014. Now this is not to throw a net of pessimism over this year. That's not me. I'm not trying to be a pessimist. In fact, yes, I tend to be that eternal optimist feeling that everything's going to be all right. Kind of like my father-in-law in that way. It's going to be all right. But it's simply to be realistic and honest about the way life is. Floods have happened. Floods are happening and floods will happen again. And when they are upon us, we need shelter. We need a refuge from the mighty waters. We need a vessel that carries us across the waters to a place of safety and salvation. We need an ark for our souls, for our spirits. Here's something to remember. Noah built the, the ark while the sun was shining. He didn't wait till it started storming to build that ark. I grew up on the coast. And storms, real storms, hurricanes roll in on top of us sometimes. And it's always amusing to watch some poor soul when the wind is about 70 or 80 miles an hour out there with the, the rain just driving sideways nailing up a board on the side of a window. That's not the time to get ready. Be prepared. The preparation comes beforehand. Remember that Noah built his ark in the sunshine. It wasn't raining when he started the project. That's worth remembering this morning if everything in your world is smooth and comfortable. That's worth remembering this morning if you have no floods of any kind in your life. And I pray that you not, you don't have. But they will come. Building an ark that will sustain us when the floods come begins with the foundation of prayer. <laughs> I believe this with every fiber of my being. It begins with prayer. A prayer to the God who has the power, as the psalmist wrote, over the flood. That's the God, that's the kill for our lives. Psalm 29 tells us that the Word of God is more powerful than the waters. That God sits in a place of authority over the floods swirling at our feet. I love the words that Kelsey sang for us a moment ago. That when the oceans rise and the waters are there, God, you've never failed me in the past. and You're not going to start now. That's worth remembering. The one that has the authority over the floods. We begin by praying to God for strength, for wisdom, as we face the challenges that come at us. We begin by praying to God for peace in the midst of the chaos that swirls around us. God is our strength and God is our refuge. You know where you read that? Psalm 46. God is our strength, our refuge. And I love those words. Be still and know that I am God. Would you say that with me? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and say that. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still and know. Be still. Be still. Prayer is the framework of the ark that will sustain us in times of great stress, in times of great troubles. But laying the keel for a ship is only the beginning. It's only the beginning. You need so much more. The construction of a spiritual ark also requires all of us. It requires a team, a community of support and accountability. For centuries, from that first century to this one, the church has done exactly that. The church has been like an ark, a place of refuge. Take a look at this building that we're in. The ceiling almost looks like the hull of a ship. It's like this is a ship that's been turned upside down. Walk into the sanctuary and look up there. You'll see the same thing. Those vaulted ceilings like that, that's not an accident. That's intentional. That's been designed like that for centuries to remind us 
of the, sh the church as an ark. Very often you'll see pyramids or you'll see pastors wearing stoles that'll have a, a ship or a boat on it. And it's to remind us that that's the church, the ark. I'll tell you something about the church. The life on the ark was not always pleasant, I would imagine. Can you imagine how stinky it got down here at the bottom of that ark after all those days? Well, sometimes the church is not a lot better. There's a pecking order sometimes in the church. There's personal agendas and control issues that have to be dealt with. In fact, sometimes the church smells to high heaven, just like the ark did. But there is one thing that makes life aboard the ark worthwhile. There is one thing that makes life in the church bearable. It's the fact that we know that there's a storm raging outside. There are wild beasts and terrible waves that we need refuge from. The church provides that shelter from the blast. The church lets us know that somehow we're on a ship that's headed in the right direction. It lets us know that we're on a ship that will take us to a safe harbor. The church is a beacon of hope for those who are up to their neck in flood waters. Building an Argus takes a team. It requires a team effort. No, the church is not a perfect place. But here's good news. We have a captain at the helm who is perfect. Who is perfect in every way. That's Jesus the Christ. The presence of Jesus is the most important element of building a spiritual ark. Jesus' words, His teachings, His witness, His lifestyle, His instructions will guide us safely home. So as we begin a new year, let's remember that the conditions for floods are everywhere. And we need an ark. An ark which comes from connecting with God in prayer. An ark which includes the church as a community of support and accountability. And an ark for Jesus has the helm. Happy New Year, church. Let's make 2014 the year of the ark. Amen. Amen. Amen.